lie. Oh, it's definitely live. You're lying to me, Zoom. All right, that means I'm going to tweet it now. Come hang out. I, this is just part. This is just part of the stream now. This is just my thing that I do. <laughs> you got to show up early so you can see Jen tweet. Yeah. Well, no, I, nobody, nobody's here right now. So great, great. Um, and we are live. I'm just gonna read this lovely intro. Welcome back to Attack the Pantry. I am Jen De La Vega. This stream is a deep dive into ingredients, cooking techniques, and recipes to help you cook for yourself during quarantine and, you know, the rest of your adult life. Last time on the stream, we talked to Diego Dandy in the Bronx about food he grew up with and this miracle grain, rice. Have you heard of it? <laughs> Watch all the past clips here on my channel. If you click on videos, the entire archive is located at youtube.com slash uh, youtube.com slash J-E-N-N-D-L-V. And I will put that in the chat for you so you can subscribe. Hello, chat. How are you? Please let us know uh, who you are, what you're doing, what you're eating. Uh, there's some great news. I'm a Twitch affiliate now. Uh, that means if you have Amazon Prime, you can gift a subscription to your favorite creators every month. So if you have one, click on the purple button, the top bottom bottom of the video that says gift a sub. And you'll get a little crown next to your name in the chat. They keep rearranging the buttons on this layout. So I don't know. Anyway, there are lots of really good links below. One way to help us out is to share this stream and tell people that you're watching uh, so they can learn all this good stuff. And guess what? I have a guest. Hello, guest. That's me. Hello. What's your name and what do you do? I'm Eric Silver. I'm a uh, the head of creative at Multitude, which is a podcast collective and studio. And I'm also the dungeon master of Join the Party. Join the party. <laughs> Uh, the fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons podcast, and I also love food a lot, and I want to come hang out with Jen. Yeah, we live very close to each other, and <laughs> and apparently the only way we can hang out is not walk to each other on this beautiful day, but hang out on the stream. But live stream together. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, what does what does the head of creative mean? What does that mean? Okay, so Multitude is a like is a podcast collective and studio so the podcast collective is that we have a bunch of shows that work together and lean on each other uh, and we're not a network because network has top-down power but as a collective we're doing like artist socialist stuff to lean on each other we pitch each right away yeah you know how we do uh and we we came together in like 2017 to lean on each other to uh go to conferences when that used to happen and like promote each other and go on each other's shows and it's been uh really really fun but head of creative is my job at like the studio and the company which is like i'm responsible for all the stuff that gets said and written on podcasts <laughs> a lot of like the pre-production figuring out that the shows are actually good and not just like the same uh 45 year old white guys who are straight and christian and work at a media company um that it needs to be actually and just like talk and like talk about things hey let's just fucking chat and we, talk over each other and interrupt each other all the time oh and our and it's not edited and sounds like trash so making sure that those our shows are better than that even before we record a first episode and then improving on it coming up with more fun ideas as the show is running and like all and always creating and making other stuff and and other stuff like uh this is the first time i'm saying it I'm, I'm working on a world book for join the party for our second no camp. way exclusive you heard it here first <laughs> that's so dope so yeah it's set in like um our so join the party is our D, D game but our second campaign that we're doing right now it's like superhero modern like very x-men it's set in a a uh, city in upstate new york which uh grew out of a small town that got like sped forward in time by science because they discovered a new element there by oh. by uh, called diaphragm which made delta radiation which is one better than gamma radiation suck it incredible hulk yeah so and, cool. just suck it and uh that it gave people powers but it, it's now like this this imagine like lake placid or one of those small towns in upstate new york but then it turned into like a city the size of portland like just in and it became the capital of New York. It's really close to Buffalo, like up there. So now like I'm making a war I'm starting on a world book for the city, which I'm having a lot of fun doing. That is so cool. So so cool. And how do we know each other? 
Oh, that's a great question. It's really funny. Jen and I have only met one other time. Yes. <laughs> even though I feel like I've been following you on Twitter and Instagram like immediately, and yeah. truly you've been my best follow of quarantine. Oh. <laughs> and it's true. I say it all the time, and I'm like, I cannot believe I don't know about Jen's like deep fucking food knowledge and history. <laughs> uh, we met when we played a game of um, – Oh, what is the name of the game? Aw oh, dang, aw oh, dang Mothman. It was <laughs> oh, dang Mothman is staying on my couch for a week, even though he said that he had to move out. Uh, yeah. We did it for a game stream. It's this wonderful ta one page tabletop RPG where Mothman lives on your couch and you have to figure it out. We did this live stream. I was D I was GMing it. And Jen, you were you and the rest of the players were so fucking incredible. I I loved that cast for that night. I love a one shot also. Um, but the the way that it was organized is Taylor, who runs my studio, which is called Fortunate Horse, Taylor Moore, Taylor.biz, uh, <laughs> decided to start a monthly or quarterly se uh, series of um, a dream stream like tabletop like all stars uh which is super super fun uh people from all sorts of podcasts who have never done uh tabletop rpgs or have done them in in various ways and just sort of mixing up the pot and and throwing us into funny situations and so uh i really enjoyed my time on that <laughs> And like you need someone like Taylor to throw people together. He just has like the raw energy to get people or he truly an organizer in so many different ways. Yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. In so many different ways, creatively and uh, union wise. Yeah. Organiz <laughs> general organizationally. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Good organizational skills. Um, all right. Let's see. Let's let's get to the the meats of the show. Uh, ah. If you in the chat would like to be featured in this segment, I love sharing your cooking photos throughout the week. So all you have to do is tag me on Instagram and Twitter, or you can DM me your photos um, and let me know what it is that you're you're cooking. Or if you see something at the grocery store or farmer's market and don't know exactly what to do with it, uh, take a photo and uh, we'll talk about it. Um, so let me just in general to you, because I have so many things I don't know what to do with in my fridge right now. <laughs> that, that, that's my, it's my life. Like, so yeah, I'm a recipe recipe developer by trade. Yeah. Um, and actually, it was only a recent honing down of my uh, my my jobs. I, I guess, you know, I started as a wedding caterer and I did every now and then freelance as a as a writer and as a recipe developer. But now it's become my full time thing because of, you know, the pandemic. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> but it's really fun. I didn't know it was a job to help authors or cookbook authors. Um, develop and test all the recipes before they even make it onto the page. And so that's kind of what I'm working on right now. Uh, and I, I love doing it and I learn a lot along the way. Hey. hey. Um, I feel like now that like they've peeled back the, oh, I lo oh look at this graphic of me. Uh, but look, you're there too. Oh my God. I mean, you're, I assume you're always there. So I was just like, oh, look, there's me. Uh, I feel like now that we've really peeled back like the, this, I don't want to get into this like too much, obviously, but like <laughs> now that they peeled back like the carapace of Bon Appetit, like I, you really yeah. see like how fucking important that shit is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we literally, with like the, the reply all shit now on top of Bon Appetit, that this could be literally the entire stream. And I don't know if we want to take that hard left turn. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 Part of my job is, is, uh, to, to, to kind of watch the authors back and, and make sure they're not stepping into some dangerous territory, be it in method or in story of the, uh, of the recipe. So so, obviously so important. Yeah. Really, really important. Uh, oh, he's okay. Here's my, my low tech solution. I love it. This is so yes. It's very organized and I make sure to clean my desktop every day. Uh, but these are the things that people submitted this week. This is from Danimal Cannon. Mm. Um, so I forgot that I need to open the app because I can't, I'm sharing my screen right now. So I can't see the chat. I just want to make sure I don't miss any comments. That looks um, good. Yes. So this is from Danimal Cannon. These are tacos al pastor. And the caption was, because I'm worth it. Yeah, I was just going to say that's perfect caption because of how much time I'm sure went into the Al Pastor of these tacos. 
Yeah. I, oh, I haven't had El Pastor in so long. Oh my goodness. I think it was Mexico City the last time I, I had it, which is oh, years man. ago. Ah. <laughs> if you're going to have it, have it there. Jeez. Right? <laughs> I, I miss, I, I'm like still envisioning just seeing the the meat cone, you know, like the, yeah. and regardless of what type of meat cone you're getting, like you were getting it for a hero or you're getting it for shawarma or at Tacos Alpa store. <laughs> I miss that. I miss someone having a meat cone. A shaving a meat cone for you. Yeah. yeah please. <laughs> oh, hello. Welcome to the chat, Zach and Robert. Glad to have you here. Uh, we're looking at Danimal Cannon's uh, Tacos El Pastor. Uh, we've got Kate and Anthony making ooh, 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 oh. stuffed cabbage. Yes. Uh, I believe it's a vegetarian mix because Kate is vegetarian, uh, but it looks like they're wrapping it in Savoy cabbage and mm. then putting it in this tomato sauce in the Dutch oven there. And then it gets baked more. That sounds so nice and cozy. Yeah. This stuff of like things that feel very eastern european for me and like whether or not i i'm here to talk a little bit about jewish food but like anything that's like eastern european or even going to russian i just have so like i want it it feels so comforting and it's something that i don't necessarily even feel that confident making on my own unless like I, it really is an endeavor like i when i made i made borscht and that was like a big fucking deal for me and really? I, and it made me well it just made me happy like i'm Aww. like i'm getting really good at like cooking like ashkenazi jewish food like chicken soup and and roast chicken and all that stuff but like things like this is that that requires like the skill of wrapping the cabbage <laughs> is like just incredible shout out this is wonderful yeah good job kate and anthony we got a shout out here from she's so mickey hell yeah stuff cabbage oh that's amanda hi amanda oh, hi amanda <laughs> well, amanda is my partner in life love and podcasting and now oh. she's Welcome, Amanda. Amanda, at the end, we're going to talk about Chopped, so you better stay to the end. It's yeah. very um, So this is related to something I'll show later, but uh, my friends, Zephyr and Sam, have been growing their own heirloom tomatoes in their apartment. Oh, my God. Like, you can see the little, like, side of one there in the photo, but, um, you know, like, apartment tomatoes are usually really small, you know, um, but they, they developed, like, a... Um, Arduino, like Raspberry Pi storage bin situation with purple lights. And so they have these gorgeous, like bulbous heirloom tomatoes. And so uh, they used some mushrooms that I gave them uh, with the heirloom tomato and made kind of like BLTs, but with a mushroom bacon in this lovely little sandwich bun. Mm, oh. Yum. Heirloom, I, oh my God. Heirloom tomatoes might be my favorite food it's it truly oh my god Do, would you just bite into one i did so right, <laughs> there was that moment in like august at um you know the greenpoint uh farmer's market yes. where i would just buy a tomato and i would eat it sitting in the park with amanda and like <laughs> that moment in like august and september where it's like pe both peak apple and tomato season so i had like an apple a one in each hand. hand and an heirloom tomato in the other hand and just taking bites holy shit oh I've never known that by now. Like I had a flash. I'm like, oh, heirloom tomatoes are my favorite food. Like I've Aww. never had them before. And I'm just like, oh, that's that's it. Yeah. That's awesome. I can't wait. I can't wait for the, the summer sun ripened tomatoes to come back to the, the farmer's market. And, you know, our farmer's market just started again on Sunday. So that's okay, great. Really? Yeah. Oh, so, my God. I'll be there this weekend for sure. <laughs> Hopefully I'll see you there. I need to go if I can find some time. <laughs> that sounds great. Um, we got Zach in the chat saying, oh, wow, I really want to build a weird high-tech tomato growing situation now. Uh, I salute you and applaud the effort. <laughs> oh, hold um, on. Someone's doing construction in there. I'm going to shut the door. Hold on. Oh, okay. Someone just oh. does randomly construction in the building because, you know, that's just a nice and fun thing to do for others. I'm still <laughs> here. I'm just going to close the door. No worries. I can talk forever. We'll just move on to the next photo. Oh, thank you for sharing the photo to the tomato and apple photo. Uh, Amanda. Um, oh, hey, we got a Twitter screenshot here. Uh, this is from my friend Ron. So this, so my friend James sent me this gif of Homer putting cornflakes and milk in a bowl and then it catches fire essentially. 
Sure. And I said, yeah, that's my job. And my friend Ron says, can you get my steak to look like a bowl of milk dough? <laughs> and I, it made me think like, can I? I'm like a dangerous person to talk to on Twitter because if you say like something outrageous in the food world, I'll be like, maybe. <laughs> I'll try to figure it out. I'll be like, can I though? I can might I get a steak to, to look like a bowl of milk? That. <laughs> oh no, it's gonna happen now. I'm I'm bracing yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna figure this out. We're gonna figure out how to make the steak uh, clear and then inject it with like some kind of milk. <laughs> Listen, it's a steak, but it's made out of agar agar. It's still yeah. steak. <laughs> oh, you're so right. We could do a milk jelly and just paint it like a steak. Exactly. Oh. It looks like a steak. Think oh my gosh. It. Think about it. It's so funny. I love it. I love I love dumb, dumb, dumb meme food ideas because I will both made it. out of fondant. You just you just need to make the bowl out of fondant regardless. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Seriously. And then we had a late entry here from verbal material, literally just out the oven te like 10 minutes ago. Fresh hot biscuits. Oh. When was the last time you had a hot biscuit? Knowing that they're still warm is making this even more upsetting that we can't have it. I know. <laughs> Excuse me. And it looks like you can see that the, these have been folded, like the envelope technique. And so they have the flaky layers. I am a huge fan of that. I love uh, these look so good. And uh, you know what? I, uh, I, miss, I miss Red Lobster biscuits. Oh, yeah. Like I wouldn't eat any of the seafood at Red Lobster, but... I would eat the biscuits all day. I would just get a Bloody Mary and just sit there and eat a bunch of biscuits. Have you gotten the uh, Red Lobster Cheddar Bay Biscuits mix that you can buy in the grocery store? No. Yeah. I One of my friend, one of my roommates must have gotten it like a bunch of years ago and made it. And like they taste pretty much the same. Oh, my gosh. I'm sure I'm going to the grocery store after this. So I'm going to go do that. <laughs> I'm or I'm sure I can figure it out, too. <laughs> Pretty sure they have it at Sea Town. Like just, oh. just pour well, as much belted butter as possible into it. As possible. I didn't notice this before, but the one on the bottom, bottom left has a bite out of it. I love that. That's good. <laughs> I'll tell you now. Legit, legit. Um, really quickly, we can go through uh, things that I've been up to. Yes, please. There, something crazy happened the other day. Uh, I'm friends with a uh, mushroom farm. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're called Small Holes. Um, they're local to Williamsburg. And uh, they're the first organic mushroom farm in, I think, in the state or in the country. But they're wonderful and they're friends of mine. So it's not weird uh, for them to come. It's like not weird for them to come over with like some mushrooms and like for me to give them some cookies, right? I'm just like, oh, stoop friends, you know, just going to trade some things. Well, I got a text the other night and they were like, you want some mushrooms? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like as usual, you know, I'm like, yeah, drop by. So I go out in my pajamas and my coat cause it was still cold. Yeah. And uh, 15 pounds arrived. Jesus Christ. This is one of them. This is five pounds of it. So it was a mix of shiitake, king oyster and uh, blue oyster mushroom heads. So this is one box. Uh, this is the second box. Uh, and my fridge is already pretty full from, from my daily work. Sure. So <laughs> I, I literally have no room for 15 pounds of mushroom. And this is like seven o'clock in the evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, uh... <laughs> You want me to like come over and get some mushrooms from you? <laughs> So I had this really epic Twitter thread of, um, hey, Twitter, uh, say 15 pounds of mushrooms arrived at your door. What do you do with it? Uh, so it's been very illuminating. Over like 60 people uh, gave me some great suggestions. And so I continued the journey of replying and being like, OK, this is what I did first. La, 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 la. And so this was the approach. Um, just for context, this is two pounds. Oh of king oyster is that, full, is that a full size sheet pan it's a, no it's a quarter so it's oh, okay it's like this big that's still pretty epic it's still a lot yeah still a lot. don't you like that i have like 
cookies just hanging out right <laughs> I'm not, nothing surprises me on this stream i was just like yeah jen's gonna pull food out from randomly like i'm just yeah yeah um so my my biggest problem is that i don't have room in the fridge so how can i store lots of mushrooms uh at room temperature and so the the first solution is to dehydrate and so i have oh, a wow. i have an industrial dehydrator and so these are shaved and they were in there for like two hours and became like chip like and so i can reconstitute these in broth or wine for later um stick them in soups cut them up to make noodles uh so that's that's one way <laughs> Another one was making uh, mushroom bacon uh, mm. because if you if you dry something enough, uh, did you know that if you cook bacon once uh, to a crisp, it can be stored at room temperature overnight? No. So same goes for mushroom bacon because it doesn't have any water activity in it. So it's basically like dried out enough that there there's no way mold can grow. Sure. <laughs> so I made a bunch of mushroom bacon. <laughs> I'm learning so much. I feel like I'm at the point. This is gonna be just like a punch, 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 punch. Um, and then this was super exciting. Someone shared. Do you know that YouTube channel Townsend's? No. It's this guy who who lives in like a historical recreation place, and he has this YouTube channel that's very wholesome, and uh, he he recreates all these recipes over a fire with like the actual tools that people had at the time. And right. so he has an old recipe for mushroom ketchup. And so I was watching this video and trying to figure it out. Basically, you cut up all these mushrooms and uh, soak them in a bunch of salt, let it uh, sit overnight. So they're fermenting overnight. So all that liquid comes out. You cook that down with a bunch of like herbs and then you can strain that and it becomes kind of like a proto Worcestershire sauce. Oh my or God. what they were calling like mushroom ketchup. Um, I believe this is like an early uh, or like vegetarian version of fish sauce because the original ketchup came from China. So mm -hmm. it just, you know, leapfrogged its way into like colonial America. Right. Like any, <laughs> any umami situation you could just call ketchup. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like sauce. Salsa. It's a salsa. <laughs> Oh, it's it's so funny. We do we do a podcast um, that's exclusive for people who are part of the multi crew. It's like our membership thing for multitude, and oh, cool. where we it's called Head Heart Gut, where it's basically like this. It's it's like an argument show where we try to pick the best out of three things using like the rhetorical triangle and stuff like that. So we just did best condiment, and I did ketchup like <laughs> three or four months ago. So you said that and I'm like, yeah, no, I do know that. <laughs> that is, I do know for the origins of ketchup. It's so funny you said that. Um, so no, that's incredible. Uh, this looks, this looks wild. I also remember you posting the photo, this photo and I'm like, oh, I guess Jen has a bottle of brown stuff because I didn't see the rest of the thread and I'm like, oh, good for Jen. <laughs> well, now you know the story. Um, but then, okay, what's beautiful about this situation is now that I have a whole thing of sauce, all that stuff that I squeezed, all the discards are actually still edible. Oh, shit. So I mixed in butter to make a mushroom pate in this ramekin. Oh, man, how did that taste? Delicious. It's just still full of flavor. Like the mushroom has so much to give, you know? Yeah. It's so generous, the mushroom. Um, so I put, I mixed in some butter and then put melted butter on top of it and then added some uh, big flaky salt and tarragon uh, for like a charcuterie board or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I had a, a whole evening of like trying to figure out what to do. And for dinner that night, I did this whole head of a blue oyster mushroom, like roasted in a cast iron pan. Uh, mm -hmm. So this was marinating in a bunch of wine and chili and garlic and then roasted like you would a pork a pork shoulder this looks incredible yeah. i love this it was jen, filling I, jen i need to, i need to confess something to you and sure. to pitch and to chat that's fine i really don't like mushrooms i hate them they're like my second least favorite food in the entire world the first is too. coconut because coconut is the devil's fruit Interesting. And if, God, and if God didn't want us to get in the coconut, he would not, she would not have created such a hard shell. That's <laughs> what, what I say. You uh, and I are okay. We align on that because I'm allergic to coconut. Okay, great. Perfect. <laughs> well, 
you are ba you've been bathed in God's light that you <laughs> have the devil's fruit. Yeah. Um, and I think it's because I had like my dad really like like the canned mushrooms or oh, the, the, yes. the I don't even know what to call them because I don't even know like the type. The, the, I guess they're porcini or like the really the button mushrooms. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like those are the ones I have really bad associations with. And even shiitake, I know they're just like really, really big of like the standard mushroom in my head. But these blue oyster ones look so different. And yeah. like, and I love fermented stuff. So this looks incredible. And I think I can venture to having like a blue, this blue oyster stuff or something a little bit different. Like I was actually just like you. I really hated them. Uh, I used to work in a restaurant and my job was to chop three Costco pallets oh of them all day. And I would just be grumbling and I, I hated it every day. It, oh, it sucked. But then um, the way that we cooked them was just so cool and different from what I grew up with. Cause I, I also had a lot of slimy mushrooms on pizza from the can um, and stir fries. They, they didn't get to this really cool, crispy, glazy level. Mm -hmm. um, and so I prefer my mushrooms like this, like completely different from, from all that. So I, I just had to find the way that I like them. Yeah. Like okay. there is this, um, Somebody was telling me on Twitter a long time ago, there's this like Indonesian like notion of, of not saying that you don't like something. It's more like, I don't know how to eat that yet. Sure, sure. It's sure. really a really fun way to approach uh, food. So I, I kind of I kind of live by that now. No, that's how I feel about coconut in both mushrooms, like from this and from like I only have like the the crappy association with coconut is that like it tastes like suntan lotion to me. <laughs> I don't think I've ever drank coconut water out of a coconut before, and like I want to to like prove to me that I'm wrong and that's true. What I also liked of you starting that story is like I was just like you. I was scared. <laughs> this is scared straight <laughs> from mushrooms. Had to convert me. <laughs> hey kids, Jen, I was just like you. Wayward didn't like mushrooms. <laughs> Watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, Dandy in the Bronx is in the chat. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Yes, that is a lot of shrooms. It's so so many shrooms. shrooms. Lots of shrooms. But, but that's my shroom story. And um, I've also been trying to get back into catering. Uh, oh, yes. Just very slowly. Um, so I'm not doing in-person events or pop-ups, but I am doing charcuterie boards like this for pickup in Greenpoint, uh, like twice a week. So people on Instagram can like DM me uh, and we can talk about, you know, what you like, what you don't like and stuff like that. But uh, this is like my, my toe dip back into the pool. Uh, and this is the latest one that I made. Uh, for so some beautiful. Time. So Thank you. We, we love, Amanda and I love charcuterie boards. Um, we snuck many into movies. Charcuterie is the best one to try to sneak into. Into movies? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We have a charcuterie board and a knife, and we bring in like a loaf of bread and cheese <laughs> and and, and uh, fruit. We brought in a whole thing. I remember for we saw Lady Bird for Valentine's Day. Like, I must have been whenever it came out, like three, two, two years ago. And we brought in like all of this that you see on this photo. We brought into a movie and ate it like in the back. It was the movie theater in like in like Upper Midtown. That's like really beautiful mm, yeah yeah that's where we saw like, it was incredible i also want to say i want one of these this looks incredible amanda is alert can't eat alums and is lactose intolerant Got so it. it's like she just can only eat like prosciutto and bread and then oh, yeah. the one gorging on cheese so like we're gonna have to talk like we gotta talk <laughs> yeah we'll figure it out we'll figure it out yeah. Oh, we got it. We got a question from Amanda. What's your favorite kind of food to preserve? Jellies, jams, curing sauces. Oh my gosh. We are, we're a big pickling household. So it's, yes, I, I do it all. <laughs> I, I have the industrial dehydrator. Uh, I make a lot of uh, dehydrated uh, fruits and vegetables and I pulverize them to make salts. Oh uh, shit. Mm-hmm. That's like my, my big life hack that I've been, that's what's been making my pandemic 
kitchen so fun because I can just grab from any of my 40 containers like oh maybe today will be leek salt or maybe today will be mushroom salt or uh, tarragon salt or something and whatever spices that I have left over in the pantry then like oh this is getting kind of old maybe I'll mix it with you know something that I've dehydrated recently um, but yeah, I also make a lot of pickles as well. Uh, I've been really into kimchi because um, yes. my friend runs a company called Mama O's Kimchi and sometimes I help out at their at their office. And so uh, <laughs> did a lot of kimchi squash, kimchi cabbage, kimchi oh radishes, everything. <laughs> give me, please give me that hookup. This is going to be, and like, I'm brave. I know I'm going to say this is going to be the fucking whitest fucking thing for me to say. Getting really into kimchi lately. I, so we went into Manhattan for the first time in like months. And there's that H Mart that's on Third Avenue now. Yes. And just like, I love pickled stuff. I've never had good kimchi. And I got just a, a jar of it. And then I fucking housed it. And now I have another, another big jar of it. And like, if you can show me and tell me, like, please. Yeah. Like I always set out a little bowl for myself to eat with rice and then the little bowl is gone before I yeah. actually start eating my dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is what I've been up to. Oh wait, I have an actual one more treat. Um, I just found these in like my Facebook memories recently. Like I got to visit the set of Sesame Street. Uh, what? A long time ago. Uh, yeah, I know. It was a dream. I cried. I <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, dude. Um, I'm sitting on the stoop, and that day they were doing an episode about Comic Con, um, but instead it was they were doing Numericon. So sure. everybody was cosplaying as their favorite numbers, which is <laughs> so cute. Jen, you're truly my favorite follow. Truly. <laughs> oh my God. You're. You... Maria's window oh. with a picture of Snuffy. So good. So did your, oh my God, look at the the photo of Big Bird's sibling. Look, is a toucan or, oh my God. Oh, right. The Brazilian, I forgot there was a recent thread about all the, the Big Bird Big relatives. Bird. Oh, yeah. Um, This is my favorite. Stop. <laughs> Fucking stop. Ram. <laughs> adorable um yeah you can pop out of oscar's trash can if you ask nicely <laughs> your, did your friend work there how did it how did you hook it up so i was going around with my friend lara um and my my friend who no longer works there uh was tony tony santoro he worked in uh lighting and grip so uh okay. he had the hookup but the fun thing the fun story behind that is i met tony uh through chili cook-offs in Brooklyn, like a cute bar, you know, would do like a local neighborhood, like chili cook off. And over the years, I met this, this older gentleman named Tony. And one day I was just like, Tony, what is it that you do? Like, I've been competing against you for years. I have no idea what you do. And he was like, oh, I work on Sesame Street. And I was like, what? Oh my God. I had a meltdown. Tony. And we met Abby, Abby could Abby. <laughs> oh my God. You can tell generationally where the, you know, where this is in the timeline, if you know who Abby is. Yeah. Um, Abby's yeah. also doing the pose that I do in photos. So that's really important. <laughs> yeah. And I don't have any red in my hair. Well, I'm sort of growing my red out of my hair, but you can tell how old I am in that. Uh, but that's what I've been up to. Uh, friends in the chat, if you would like to submit photos for next week, happily we'll accept them via Instagram or Twitter. Just make sure to tag me. My username is Rand Witches. Random sandwiches. It's a portmanteau. Yeah, it is really fun and precious and cute. I, I had the best time and I love I love this memory. Let's talk about, Eric, what, what you sent me some photos. So you told sure. me this borscht was an ordeal. Yes, it wasn't even that it was an ordeal. I mean, it's relatively, Porsche is relatively easy to make. It's beets, you put it in a thing, you you let it cook, it's all that. But it was, I, I don't know, maybe in the way that the world was going in 2020, I had recently just, my Jewishness, I felt like I needed to put out there and I needed to participate a little bit more. I think that I've lived in New York State my entire life. I've lived in New York City since I was 18. I feel like I've, this is one one of the only cities that you can or one of the only places where I felt like I was taking my Jewishness for granted. And then recently, you know, 
it's not safe. You know, it's just not a safe place to be anything else other than incredibly Christian and incredibly white and incredibly straight and incredibly, <laughs> incredibly male. So it is in 2020, I was just really trying to connect with, with food like this. And I made my own borscht and I felt really proud of myself. I love cold borscht. I don't like hot borscht and also like making it like this. No, never. And and uh, I can't get it at Veselka, which is where I usually get borscht. And I, I feel this connection. So I made it myself and it just made me really happy. And like just cutting the beets, feeling like purple stained and, and buying as much dill as I could get my hands on. It was just <laughs> a really nice feeling. It's always such a good pairing. Like, the, is that yogurt on top? Yeah, yeah. You know, you usually put sour cream in, but I am addicted to plain Greek yogurt. I put it, I, I, I substituted for literally everything. <laughs> <laughs> the damn, I've been outed shit. So yeah, <laughs> but you know, like you have to put, drop the tons of dairy in there. Yeah. Also, uh, um, Amanda and I make our own, make a lot of our own stocks because Amanda can't eat alums. So we love making our own chicken and beef and mm. stock. We go, we get um meat from uh, Walden farms which does like the delivery from various plates upstate and like can we'll just send you bones so we love just getting chicken backs from them and just roasting the fuck out of them and then making uh making broth i think this one was made with uh with uh, the beef broth that we made we bought oh, yeah. beef bones. walden oh, farms cool. fucking incredible i didn't know them now i do oh i have to look into that i think yeah. you're you're probably within the range if we get it so you're probably you're probably they'll, they'll drop it off it's incredible I live in a weird warehousey area, so maybe we'll we'll check on it later. You're only, you're like only a few blocks away from me. You should be fine. You should. Be fine. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Um, and you've got your cucumber, and it's just it's just a lovely bowl. It's just a lovely bowl. Yeah, like you know, I'm not. I I like I said is like if you're at level five, I'm at level two. But like, I just wanted to do something. That made me happy and made me feel really, really Jewish. And well, uh, that's why I did it. Yeah. It's perfect for days like today because it's so warm in New York right now. So, yes. so warm. Yeah. I yeah. really wish I had some. Oh. Also, I was like, I made so much borscht and I was eating it for like a week. And I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> that is something that I've learned over the years uh, as a chef is like scaling things down or looking at how much it makes and being like, no, I only need half of this. <laughs> yeah. And like I'm usually the only one eating it because Amanda has really has like a sensitive palate, so mm. her body can't process it. She's not like, oh, I don't want this. Is like she can't eat so many things that I want to. Like, there's obviously onion in that, so I eat it myself. Um, so uh, what's going on here? Yeah. Okay. So fucking. This is one reason why Greenpoint is the best. The Acme Locks Company. Yeah. Uh, yes. Fish Fridays. Fish oh Fridays. my god. I, it, the thing that has made me feel like such an adult and like a fancy adult is treating locks like it's deli meat. And <laughs> like, like, but like in the nicest way possible, like that fish and locks is something I can get. And that like I it is not that more. So at fish. So Acme is the incredible fish place that serves lots of places in New York. Like the locks you get at Rust and Daughters, the locks that you get in Dean and DeLuca, the pastrami locks that is from Acme. And mm -hmm. on Fridays, you can go and get wholesale prices. So it's like 16, 18 dollars a pound, which, again, is not that much more expensive than like decent deli meat. Mm -hmm. uh, you think about it like you know i get like a pound and a half of honey turkey and it's like 16 dollars already yeah. so i got this and i just wanted to we use locks for everything like i use it obviously on bagels but putting it in, in eggs or substituting it for like a, a sandwich or um doing stuff stuff like this we put them in salads so this was just kind of like the apotheosis of a lot of stuff here i really wanted to make i really we just had some tortillas from a leftover from hello fresh shout out to working in fucking podcasting you're gonna have random bits of hello fresh like we we scavenge it like it's like it's the corpse <laughs> of a buffalo we just take it apart and, and use it in, in things and uh we pickled our own a red onion and jalapeno i made my own crema from the the aforementioned uh Oh my goodness. Yogurt and just like it's not it's not it's just a lot of stuff I wanted to eat all at the same time, you know. 
I, this all sounds so lovely. And Amanda says, I do get first crack at the she-wolf bread, though, in regards to the allergy. <laughs> <laughs> she gets first crack at the bread, but then I get to eat everything else. That she she-wolf is also amazing. Oh. Um, I love Acme Fish Friday. Um, it was such a, a thing before the pandemic. It was a really unique experience going to the warehouse because there was this long line. Everybody's dressed in these like white, long, like doctor's coats and um, they're handing you samples just oh, the best. in the line and they're, somebody's c cutting something and you're like, what is that? And they're like, want to try it? And they'll just hand you a piece of fish and you're like, ah! <laughs> And my favorite discovery was that they have um, a daily special. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Even if you do order, pre order, um, you can still ask and be like, what's a daily special? Like sometimes I'll have a jalapeno one yeah. um, or like other flavor, like lemon or something like that. Um, yeah, it is, it is such a wonderful, wonderful gem. But they're still in business and they're still doing uh, curbside pickup. So, yeah. Oh yeah, there's nothing more fun than picking up like three pounds of locks that you pre-ordered. Oh my God. Like I, I ordered on behalf of a bunch of friends uh, last summer and I, I dropped like hundreds and hundreds of dollars on fish, but it was so worth it because there was like sable yeah. and like, yes, yes. Uh, like all these other fish that like I never get to try really um, unless you go in with somebody, you know, like some of the packs are like bulk only. Yeah, uh, so you can never get just like a, an eighth of a pound for yourself. <laughs> I'm gonna get stable. I'll go in with you. I the last time I had it is when I have bagels with my grandma on Long Island, and like my my brother loves sable and putting that on bagels. So I'll go in with you. Yes, ah, sable date. You, me, and a man. <laughs> oh, catching up in the chat. Thank you, Annalyn. Oh, my, what, one of my relatives is in the chat. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Olivia, great to see you. Olivia says, oh my God, I want that taco. A few bad dudes. No, you did not miss too much. We are just talking about things that Eric has, has sent me here. Uh, and we're just talking about how lovely Greenpoint is. Uh, with What's the best? Everyone moved to Greenpoint. Yeah, I love it. I, I, I love that we live, live in the same neighborhood. Um, what's going on here? Uh, what's with this bourbon pecan pie? Okay. So I have been in charge. I love Thanksgiving. I think having an entire, much like Jewish holidays, I love having holidays that revolve around cooking. Ooh, yeah, and nice. recently, uh, Amanda and I have been in, we've totally overhauled our Thanksgiving. I have it with my mom who lives in Nashville and getting to use her kitchen has been really, really Ooh. wonderful. She, she built the house herself. It is this beautiful, massive ass kitchen. It is. It's okay. So, it's just two ovens, like an open range. It is incredible. So this was like my first foray into overhauling Thanksgiving. Was that I said I would make pie, and this was adapted from. Uh, uh, this is back when Bon Appetit was a reputable source. Um, <laughs> this is adapted from the bourbon pecan pie that they did in there. Um, or did I, one time I did make my own crust, which was really nice, but actually using chocolate graham cracker crust with this bourbon pumpkin pie, which doesn't, which only gets its sugar from maple syrup actually makes it super simple. And then you can make two pies because there's enough for one very deep pie, but you know, Ooh. graham cracker crusts are a little bit shallow. I then candied pecans and put them on top because the, you know, graham cracker crusts aren't crunchy. So I wanted some crunch. So this is, I make this every Thanksgiving and it has been like the, the beginning of taking over Thanksgiving. This, the la most recent Thanksgiving, we fucking, uh, we turned it up. I literally, oh, yeah. I, we made, I think we made 80% of Thanksgiving and like was responsible for all of it. And it was just like, it was in, we, I think we made nearly everything except for the turkey which which uh, my mom's husband made and my mom made like two things and we made everything else. Oh my gosh. What a joy. I love I love Thanksgiving. It's one of my favorites as well. Yeah. Uh, we got Olivia saying eating is the best part of my of any holiday. It's true. I agree. Oh my gosh. My Thanksgiving, we didn't do a turkey this year. We did well actually no, I'm lying. I had two Thanksgiving. <laughs> I did like it spaced apart. The whole month of November was actually de dedicated to uh, Thanksgiving. So I did two weeks apart, two different friend pods. Mm -hmm. One had turkey and uh, traditionally, and then the other one we did a beef roast. Oh, uh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. That was, that was really enjoyable. So you already mentioned that y'all do charcuterie. 
Yes. Yeah, this yeah, is the yeah. charcuterie we did on Valentine's Day. Oh. So this is literally everything we've been talking about coming together here. So this is an incredible cheese board that uh, Amanda bought. And these are all things that I got in Greenpoint. Uh, so that's the She Wolf bread. You can up the oh. there, which is like our local bakery uh, up here that that like sells to various places. It, it's just is so so good. Um, at Eastern Eastern Market, which is this cheese place uh, up in Northern Greenpoint, I got uh, Midnight Moon cheese, which is up. Oh, up. love Midnight Moon. So good. We also got pickles from from there. Um, there's also a prosciutto that we got from there. That is the. Uh, pastrami locks we were just talking about in terms of acme those are just some grapes <laughs> just just to balance it all out but and then we uh, we, we uh dipped uh some pineapple and uh strawberries and chocolate because it was valentine's day but also like it was really fun like i don't know who keeps saying tempering chocolate is difficult it's like it's obviously a skill but it's not that scary not that hard <laughs> just gotta figure out how to do it that's all yeah, we we had, we did like a poor man's tempering, which is that we got it to to the boiling point, and then we added chocolate chips in. So you can see it's not glossy, but we definitely got that like that real matte. Uh, you can see on the on the mm. strawberries. Amanda oh, okay. did such a good job. Yeah, gorgeous, lovely, lovely, snacky, snacky. I'm all about it. Yeah. Uh, do we have one more here? We got your shakshuka. Yes, the green Sorry. shakshuka. So this Over is. The eggs. Yeah, it's this is the stuff that you were saying about what do you do when you get something from the farmer's market? You got so much stuff. We used to do a CSA in Greenpoint, and we got so many ramps and green onions. And oh. I'm the one who could eat it because Amanda can't eat it because the onion. So I'm like, what am I going to do with this? So I made a green chakchuka with it, and I was really proud of it. It's, it's, it's not that pretty, but I'm happy that I used all the green. I think it was great. It was really good. I think I ate all of this at once. It was really <laughs> I'm a fan of shakshukas in general. For those of you in the chat who don't know what that is, it's uh, also called eggs in purgatory. It is typically eggs baked in a spicy tomato sauce. Uh, but shakshuka in general is, is eggs baked in something. So uh, this, is, this is a lovely version of that. <laughs> I love that because shakshuka is Israeli and... Uh, it's very funny that you said egg is in purgatory. It's like some Christian person needed to change it to make it something else. That we can do yeah. It. yeah. Wild. Um, but no, actually, this is another thing. I, I It took me a really long time to learn this because I thought for a very long time that you made it with tomato sauce. And when you make it with tomato sauce, it's too liquidy. So you can't really get those nice pockets of egg. And I didn't have a cast iron that I really liked. So I was, I always burn the eggs because it would just go on top and it just wasn't good so this was like the best shakshuka i've ever made by Aww. making it with the ramps and the green onions and these greens i actually it was thick enough that i can make pockets to put the eggs in and it actually cooked really well and Aww. i popped it a little bit in the oven to make sure that it cooked through even cooking yeah yeah totally totally uh olivia in the chat says shakshuka is one of the first things i learned how to cook yay yeah. wonderful <laughs> And also a note from earlier about Thanksgiving. I once had a fried chicken and waffles Friendsgiving just because I bought a waffle iron and my friend had a deep fryer. That's so cool. Oh. <laughs> Here's the thing about chicken and waffles that no one says. It is so it is so hard to get wrong. Like when you will consume chicken and waffles when you go to a brunch place or you try to make it yourself, two things that are very difficult, making good waffles, and making good fried chicken. Like high barrier of entry there, like shout out. That's just as hard as cooking a turkey. Oh my gosh, yes, yes. And that's kind of why we did a beef roast for the second Thanksgiving. It was like, you know, what's something we haven't had before? And it, it's gonna, you know, it's like a, it's a communal cooking experience. And so I'm all, I'm all about that chicken and a waffle Thanksgiving. I kind of want to convince my friends to do that now. <laughs> it's incredible uh my roommate and my best friend uh she's from she's from virginia and she every so often she would just like crank out biscuits and fried Ooh. chicken and i knew that these are, these are just like some sacred recipes that were being passed down Two so difficult two things that are so difficult that require so much timing like fucking southern cooking is it has some 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 sort of amount of magic I know. And Olivia continues here. My friend with a deep fryer is Southern and fried chicken pro. I just tried a bunch of silly waffle recipes. <laughs> Everything from a box to some yeasted waffles, to putting latka in a waffle iron. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Feel That's the feel. 
Can we talk about? I need to talk about latkes for a second. Can we talk about latkes? Can we fucking talk about latkes? Yes. Any way that you make a latke, here is my secret, yeah. and I think maybe the people out there have KitchenAid mixers. Um, would probably if you have one. I know that's like the 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 um housewarming or wedding wedding yes. item. Sure, <laughs> you'll get a KitchenAid mixer. Uh, this is also part of it. Get a um the meat grinder attachment. Because grinding your own meat is very fun in general. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what you do. Here's how you make amazing latkes. Oh, my God. Put the potatoes in the grinder on the highest setting. No do way. It anyway, get it all cold, all that shit. And then it becomes like like the equivalent of corned, corned beef hash, but it will be potato. And then it's going to already be aerated, so you won't have to put in baked baking soda. And then it will fry much easier because it's not shredded. I know latkes are traditionally they're shredded. You have to have a ton of oil to make sure they cook properly. But if you do it like this, then they'll be a little bit more like hash browns. However, still fucking delicious, still latkes because you made them. I love that. That's a good trick. It's, it's, really good it's trick. not traditional. It's really weird. But if you want to do it, that's my that's my hack. Thank you. I didn't even, I've never even heard of that. So that's, that's amazing. Ah, ah. I, I just made a blog post last week about a community bookstore in Park Slope. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to cater, co-cater their holiday party, which was a latka party. So oh. they would order the latkes locally to like support a local business. And then I would bring this big spread of cheese and, and bread and the whole book staff would hang out with the cat and eat latkes. It was amazing. What are, <laughs> what are toppings you put on latkes? Because I think that that's kind of, it's a little divisive. Mm -hmm. I edit, it, it's, it's always apple. It's like if you're going to be traditional, you got to do applesauce. Yeah. There is because sour cream is a little goyasha just in general. Like, you know, Christians use sour cream. I feel like it's just like a thing. Like mayo as well is a little goyasha. But like you can say, but I love putting dairy on potato. Mm -hmm. So like I've still done that. It's still like a thing I like doing and it's still delicious. So there's putting Greek yogurt on it. Now here's where you get fucking sick. You put the locks the pastrami locks with some cream cheese um, sour cream or greek yogurt on top of your latka boom dress if you have like caviar or you have um not even not even caviar it's too fancy to say caviar whatever fish egg you fish like. eggs, yeah <laughs> whatever fish egg there are cheap fish egg. eggs out there yeah <laughs> yeah we put and then put fish egg on top and it just looks really real pretty um, I think the radical thing that I've been seeing from from other people is mixing up the vegetables. Oh, so yeah. Doing zucchini with the potato or onion, and even I've seen apple. Uh, like uh, people have been uh, spiralizing, so they're like more nest-like and curvy, more so than the. You know what I'm talking about? Half. I do know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 No, I think it's great. Yeah, what were some, but sorry, I just said a whole thing about things I liked and didn't actually ask my question. What are things that you would put on the latka when you were doing the thing? No, I think we were just really plain about it. It was like salt and they were just lovely and crispy. Oh, I thought that you brought cheese and put it on the latka. No, no, no. I, I would just bring the, I would do the cheese spread and then someone else would do all the latkas. And it would just be this giant latka party. And I'm sure people throughout the party were sandwiching, like, you know, slices of apple with cheese and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I formally didn't force that on anyone. <laughs> oh, no. No, that was, I was like, that's so interesting that they were asking for dairy on latka. That's so interesting. <laughs> but no, now I want to put some, like, fucking brie on a latka, on a hot latka. Oh, that sounds my incredible. goodness. I think that's a great transition into Jewish food in general. So you already started talking about this earlier and and your relationship to it. And I, I can relate to that. Uh, I'm like a first generation Asian American person who grew up on 90s fast food and commercials for like Dunkaroos and Taco Bell and things like that. And so in my 30s and, and sort of later in my chef career, I've, I've called it my great cultural backpedaling. <laughs> <laughs> Where I am also just like you trying to connect with my roots a little bit better and like talk to my family about like, okay, how do we eat that? Do we eat that? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I feel, I totally feel that way. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, 
the uh, Jewishness is very fraught right now because the thing that's a pro like Jew, many Jews, because not all Jews are white. There are many Jews of color around the world. The uh, 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 white privilege and the assimilation that comes from being uh, a white Jewish person that you don't know that someone is Jewish until you decide whether or not to reveal it. That is a privilege and that you can just pass. But now uh, you can't do that because fucking uh, you, you just you, it's bad. It's bad out there for everybody. It's bad out there for liter almost everybody. And I feel like I've been trying to connect to uh, to not to put too f my fine of a point on it, like you said about the cult cultural backpedaling, but like looking to the old country and like <laughs> real like fucking shtetl food and like because you know ro roast chicken lox bagels are feel like assimilated jewish food or like new york food mm. and able to take for granted because of that privilege of feeling like i am in a city in a very jewish city that is good for jews and we don't have to run and we don't have to be worried but like we oh we do because of the way that the world is right now so that's why i felt like borscht and other Eastern European food, like things that have to do with beets and pickling mm. um, and, and Eastern European things. Uh, I really feel that way. I, I remember, I, I still remember this moment where uh, we went to Portland for a podcast thing and it was being put on by the city of Portland and they took us to this Russian restaurant. I, I don't remember the name of it, but it's this very famous por uh, Portland restaurant. And it's rich and they have like vodka flights and stuff. Like there, it is, it is incredible there. How come I don't know this? <laughs> I, I, I wish I, I told myself I was going to look up the name of this place because I loved it so much. And then because we were with like Portland people, like the the tourism board of Portland, they just ordered like tons of stuff. Everything. They just yeah. kept coming out. And like of course with Russian food, there's and it was like around lunchtime, there was a lot of cold Russian things. Cold and that. <laughs> Say that again. Cold preparation stuff. Yeah, 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 cold prep stuff like like they're tartan, like a, a tartine or like a stacked thing and, and other things. And then I kept eating it, and I was like, "This is so close to these this Eastern European food that I feel like very connected to that I haven't had made for me or I haven't cool. looked out like fishes and and horseradish and beets." And I still remember the moment of eating this stuff and these like little cold dumplings, and I'm just like, "Oh, oh my god." And I, I wish that I had looked out for that stuff and wanted it just as much because it feels very precious to me. Um, and things that things that are, are Jewish from being from from the diaspora of Judaism and also the American Jewishness and being very aware and claiming that trying to understand both of that through food is a real big deal. So like what I said about treating lox as a deli meat, that feels like such like a like a vindication you know of like being an american jew mm. and being able to eat lox however i so choose um is nice and having a place like acme where i can go and just be like yeah i know this i want this and thank you for giving it to me oh yes absolutely absolutely like so with the borscht journey are there other dishes that you've sort of gone on an adventure with um in hmm. this vein of like trying to rediscover or discover that yeah, that's interesting. Uh, the borscht was really the high point. Was really okay. the high point. No, <laughs> you know, cooking cooking with chicken has been really like roasting a chicken is feels very Jewish to me. I know that's just like kind of basic household, but mm -hmm. uh, I have really strong associations with food you would have on Shabbat on Friday night, which is the Jewish day of rest that starts on Friday night and goes to Saturday night. And like you have, you always make sure to have meat on Friday because it's a, a Friday night celebration. So. Like that becomes a relationship between the food that my mom and my dad would make and then the food that I am now making and realizing like, oh, you could just roast vegetables. They're so much better. And like, oh, you could just use a meat thermometer in a chicken. It's so much better. And you shove a lemon in the cavity. It's like I'm really this is also like a thing of recognizing the and how I'm trying to own my own cooking lately It's like I can do it better because I have better technology and like I have the time and I might as well do it. Like, yeah, I made the, ch I'm 29 and my parents already had me and my brother, my, my twin brother. And we were like, th ah, when we were already, I mean, they had us by the time we were 29 and like, yeah, I don't have a house, but I'm going to learn how to make a goddamn good yeah. chicken. <laughs> like, 
guess like the the millennial experience plus like the Jew, this Jewish experience is all coming together for me in 2020, 2021. Oh man. Uh, rewind, rewind. You're a twin? Oh yeah, 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 I'm a twin. Uh, my brother is uh, four inches taller than me and like 60 pounds lighter than me. <laughs> and he has kept kosher his entire life. We were kosher for our for um, until we got out of the house, but he, he kept that. And he also loves to cook. But, you know, he's doing he lives on the Upper East Side. So he's like having a different kind of experience with like uh, Fairway and Zabar's and, and stuff yes. like that. So I, the, I, you know, the, the Manhattan Brooklyn tension in this way. Very different up there. Yeah. <laughs> but no, he's a great cook. He's also very interested in Japanese stuff. And like, Ooh. he's opened my eyes to like omakase and stuff like that. He's teaching himself how to learn Japanese. He, he loves, he loves that stuff. So like, I'm learning other things from him, but you know, the life that he has feels like, you know, such a box, but like, I'm the one, I'm the one doing an art, having an arts job of my own in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. So it's just like, <laughs> You know how it yeah. is. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, I've also, we've made a ton of our own chicken soup, which is incredibly Ooh. Jewish. And um, it's such a wonderful, like, adult achievement to yeah. do that. Like, you know, when I discovered how how simple it could be yeah. or or how customizable it could be, that that's, that's something that really, like, unlocked my brain when I was in my 20s, for yeah. sure. Listen, I'm I'm getting there. I want to follow you. You're the one with all the deep history. I'm just like figuring this shit out. Um, but no, it's like I said, um, Amanda, my partner, can't have onions and garlic. So making our own chicken stock and roasting chicken backs feels very Jewish to me. <laughs> like, you know, using all the parts of the of the chicken, it feels very, uh, very Jewish to me. So roasting the chicken backs, not being afraid of the chicken backs and then turning that into like beautiful, beautiful chicken broth that we can both eat that is chilling hard in our freezer right now is yeah. Yeah, it feels very very owned yeah that's so wonderful oh catching up here uh welcome to the chat schmas good to see you uh I got amanda sharing the link to kochka which is the name of the restaurant yeah, thank you thanks awesome. amanda. thank you you are our fact checker. <laughs> in the, in amanda the truly is my fact checker and i don't mean that i just i can't <laughs> oh dandy in the bronx is asking like legit chicken soup it's wild <laughs> i only know canned food <laughs> yeah. yeah once you learn how to make your own chicken soup from a chicken carcass it's like oh like there, it's like grandma level there is a recipe that um there's a recipe where you can start where you make chicken soup from just water like you don't do the consomme where you boil the chicken and then you have the chicken meat. I It doesn't sound as incredible, but when I realized that like, I don't, I can't, Amanda's going to know the recipe and probably put the link in the chat, but like start, there's a Bon Appetit recipe that where like you really just start from water and it becomes that luscious chicken soup. It's really the impressive. And the fat. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's really, it's just really, really nice. And yeah, the ways the different ways you can do it, um, by putting the fucking it all up with all that other stuff um i would like finding different types of noodles to put in there mm. i found like walking into h mart and seeing all of those like the fr the uh like the deli fresh noodles that are there that you can just throw in there has been like so i open really finish in like two minutes or something it's, like that it's yeah. incredible yeah so good so good and how about how about over the holidays? Do you have any favorite Jewish foods for the holidays? Like besides the latkes that we already talked about, is there like one that you're like, I need it? <laughs> yeah, there's something that actually I haven't had in a really long time. And I think that we can climb the mountain on. So uh, Amanda has been getting really into baking. She mm -hmm. loves, loves to bake. We owe so much money to King Arthur, which is fine. <laughs> 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 but um yeah I, I haven't made a challah in a really really long time and I, it's super simple it's just egg the egg wash and and you braid it but on rosh hashanah uh the the day of the 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 first day of the jewish new year um which comes in september so there's a, a plenty of time but you make a round one which has extra honey in it and raisins yeah. to like symbolize a sweet and and healthy new year um and that's i just making some khala and making a round khala would be really really fun <laughs> i i had a coworker uh <laughs> who was jewish who sat next to me uh when i did go to an office and um from after like seder 
she would be eating the leftovers at lunch the yeah. next day next to me. And my favorite thing, and it, it's, it's a very simple thing, but it was the, uh, is it Sharoset or Haroset? Oh yeah, Haroset, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, I'm sorry. No, um, no it's cool. And the it's, fact that you know what that is, is wild. I was like, oh, she's gonna say good filter fish. And I'm like, oh no. shit, oh, here we go. It's like such a good lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I know that there are, are different versions uh, for different practices, uh, but hers was apple and grain and honey and dried fruit. And so I was just like, oh, you're going to eat all that? <laughs> shnack, 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 shnack. <laughs> I wonder what type of grain it is. So it's for Passover, which is nearly here. Um, and uh, th what I love about the Seder, which is the thing that you do on Passover, was that like food, it's food as symbolism to the extreme. So like Horosan is supposed to symbolize the the mortar of the bricks that the Jews made in Egypt when they were enslaved. So it's like, all right, okay, <laughs> like, thanks for the symbolism. Uh, it's supposed to be more of a paste situation, but hers was more of a salad. <laughs> Yeah, no, you can totally have chunky haroset. So I wonder what, like, what the grain was, because you're not supposed to have grains on Passover. So I wonder <laughs> what she did with that. Like, what was in there? I don't know. Like, because it's like a fruit, uh, do like a fruit salad, apple, walnuts, wine. Maybe you put some uh, some dried fruit. It was nuts and uh, maybe a bran that's not necessarily like a grain. Yeah. There was like yeah. some, some flakiness happening. Um, maybe not a grain. I'm sorry if I misunderstood. No, no, that's really, I'm wondering like what loopholes we can do to get around <laughs> Passover that she did. Like that's, I need to know. <laughs> Like I, I've done a few satyrs in school, like just as like a, like you should know what this is. Um, and I remember like reading through, taking turns reading through. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, so that that's my favorite part of Jewish holidays. Just oh. that coworker that would give me her little Tupperware. <laughs> that's incredible. No, satyrs are really fun, and I think that it has to do with like um dinner and holiday dinners as ceremony really mm. truly in the fact that like you have foods that are symbols and represent other things and you call them out as you do you tell the story of passover of exodus for all my uh i know that you like the new shit of of, of god but we just like the old shit we like the old <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to think if there's any simulacra in in um catholicism like how i grew up uh i mean we eat during the mass like the one little like body of christ thing that you I mean, that's so representative like the talking about what wine is if you're thinking wine as the body as the blood of christ but the wine in the, the it's funny you say that the wine in the seder is truly representative of joy and mm. when you think the story uh, you know We've all seen the Prince of Egypt, right? So when uh, the, all the Egyptians, when the Jews make it by running through the dead through the Red Sea, and it closes behind and kills all the Egyptians, you're supposed to take or and the plagues have befallen the Egyptian people. You're supposed to take drops of wine and put it on your napkin so that you do to take away the joy that we have in this to remember that people died. So it is it is representative in a similar way of what wine is supposed to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I, 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 that's interesting. I don't, I, are there any, I actually don't know much about like Christian holidays other than like Easter and Pat and, and uh, Christmas. Yeah. But I mean, food isn't so directly symbolic Yeah, for a mo like for one night or like one event. Mm -hmm. Like, like we, we do have the weekly on Sunday, the wine and the, the body of Christ, but sure. no sit down explain to you everything or like retelling of, <laughs> of the same story because every church just has like this like different uh sermons or homilies like it's always been different um but yeah i don't i don't think i've ever been to anything that's like mapped out one-to-one -one, this dish is for this this dish is for this uh so i'm i'm i only have to think about this and look into it i want i want to know no, but, listen, Passover savers, satyrs are wild. So, so <laughs> like that is so, that's so, um, that's so specific. Well, I think that part of it, and this is kind of tied to some of the stuff I was talking about before, but like you do a satyr to remember the story that we're talking about. And there is an idea of scarcity and of uh, peril always mm -hmm. at Jewish holidays. A really good summary is they tried to kill us. They didn't. So let's eat. And 
that's in specifically that is truly the story of Passover, which is which is coming up. You literally need to do it to make sure that uh, people know and you invite as many people as possible to yeah. come to the Seder, which is why I love Passover as well. Yeah. And I, I want to say that, like, because I've been to a few that like I felt very welcome and like, you know, part of it. And so that, I, I love that. I love that communal communal taking away of joy. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fair. No, it's fair. You got it. You got it. Someone, someone's going to take it away. So you, you need to keep it. You, you need to figure it out. You need to make sure you know where all your joy is. And then only you get to take it away. You don't get to take it away. Only I get to take it away. Oh, we've got some soup links in the chat. Thank you, Amanda, for sharing the Bon Appetit classic. <laughs> Thank you. Amanda's got your back here. Uh, uh, we also got Leah. Oh, hi, Leah. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you're here. Leah has a vegan soup from Food52. Yeah. Andrea, Andrea Nguyen, uh, somebody who I know online, vegan chicken soup. Yes, yes. Ooh, that's um, interesting. I use that trick with the nutritional yeast in other stews. Yes, nutritional yeast is a great uh, flavor booster for vegan veganizing things. Or also in general, I like eating it on popcorn. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but... Oh, thank you for sharing like all of this knowledge about about the holiday food and the traditions, because like I'm I'm not really aware of all those things. Um, but yeah. another thing that you mentioned that maybe you do know a thing or two about is takeout or yes. making it a little more fan, judging it up a little bit, judging it up a little bit. Yeah. Listen, I, I'm not saying that I'm doing anything incredible or extraordinary, but I think that there are things. I love le leftovers are truly my favorite food. When someone asks me what my favorite food is, I say leftovers. Left they're incredible. They're food that you already made that's in your fridge and you can eat them right now. Yeah. They're incredible. <laughs> but I think that there is an art to either reheating leftovers or doing something to leftovers to make it into a meal. Like okay. yeah, you could eat whatever out of a container, but it's just not the same. And I think that it's related to uh, takeout food. So what I always do, this is something that I've been doing really recently. I've been supporting uh, the, our local Chinese food place. Um, that's you, the one on Manhattan. That's like, I don't know if it's too far away from you, but there's a Chinese food place that's really close to us. And I've been trying to, you know, do my part during, uh, during lockdown to support them. And they're incredible. They have like two kids that are always running around. Oh. And they order. <laughs> they're incredible. Um, and they make orange chicken with no garlic for Amanda. And I love it. Oh, them. so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the best and they make really really good miso soup i really like their miso soup so i always get uh the large which is a quart of miso soup <laughs> every time that i get like beef and broccoli or chicken and broccoli to go and what i love to do is i'll eat it for dinner for dinner later or for lunch uh, for lunch later and i'll pour like i'll have like a quart of, i'll have like a, a pint of it or, or whatever but when i reheat it i put like garlic powder and chili fl and me and um oh what is the name of the, the the chili that is from that is named after a city in iran um uh i'm talking about the the pepper that the aleppo pepper yeah aleppo i pulled aleppo in and then i'll put in um for, or maybe i'll put in for a kake which i also mm. love and just like taking things that you have at home that you already like the flavor because like their miso soup is already banging but like i'm just adding more things that make me happy to put yes. in put on top of it i was talking about like i love putting shit on pizza from home yes. so i get like a slice of i really like broccoli pizza what broccoli pizza. <laughs> I really do. I don't know if it's my mom was super, my mom was like super, uh, super into vegetables. So like, I guess I learned how to love broccoli pizza, but you know, putting stuff that you have at home on it, like um, I would put, uh, I'd make a crema and put it on there. Mm. Uh, on, I know people already put hot, uh, hot sauce on pizza, but like picking the right hot sauce for your pizza, like are you gonna do Frank's Red Hot? Uh, I've been doing, uh, there's a Brooklyn hot sauce place that I've been ordering from. I think it's called Shaniqua. Shaniqua's. Oh. It, it was, they, were on, they were on um, Hot Ones for a while, but I got this black garlic one from them. They, they're like in, it's in uh, Brooklyn. It's so, so good. We are going to do that. Are you going to do something super hot and like blow it out as you eat this, this pizza? And I don't know. It's just like, I feel like I'm, if it's going to be takeout or delivery, I feel like I need to do something to it to make it mine. It's like there's a collaboration between the restaurant and me. Like, I'm not the kind of person who brings condiments to a restaurant. I'm not a monster. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> but, 
but like also like putting fish sauce into things that maybe didn't have fish sauce in it, putting XO sauce into things that didn't have it in there. I didn't realize this was weird, but I started doing it. And Amanda's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm just putting furikake. In. And she's like, I never would have thought of that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> or like putting, I like to put peanut butter on, on chip witches. Um, so that's another thing is like you can what? do this with frozen with frozen things. Yeah. Put like an ice cream sandwich? Yeah. 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 Put peanut butter on an ice cream sandwich. Yo, that's so easy. Yeah, exactly. And like this is also to maybe it's it's also tied to the relationship I have with frozen Trader Joe's food. Oh. And like that up as well. So like again, use the spices and the sauces you already have and make delivery, takeout, or uh frozen food a little bit better. Yeah, you've got strong condiment game. <laughs> I, yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I have strong condiment game. I'm not going to you, And you pickle. Like, yeah, you got lots of stuff to play with. Like, you're making your own kitchen stadium. <laughs> I'm trying. Listen, I'm trying, man. I just, I love condiments. I really do love condiments. I think that's what it is. Like, I'm not great at cooking yet. I'm working my way up. But I do think I have strong condiment game. Absolutely. You have like a lot of accessories to play with, you know, like, <laughs> what like I do, uh, shout. So this is again, the relationship that I have with my brother and maybe the difference here. He got me like those, they're, you know, the, they're like little vinegar bottles, but are they're flavored vinegars and you Ooh. put it in there. It's a little startup. -y. It's called like step up or something. Have you oh, heard I of don't it? Know. Um, yeah, it's like they're little vinegar bottles and there's like a black garlic one, a miso one, stuff like this. Ooh. And like, yeah, it's a little startup y and a little like uh we're we're messing with cooking. We're cooking, making cooking easy. This is how I feel about sous vide too, is like we need to disrupt cooking, I guess. Oh, yeah. But like <laughs> it's interesting because it's a vinegar with spices in it, so it fits really well with whatever I'm cooking. And that's like, yeah, mixing with the condiment throwing it in when I'm cooking, when I'm reheating rice or, or something has been really fun. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of fried rice as a vehicle for my leftovers. Um, so I'm a huge, I grew up with making fried rice all the time. And my parents would always chop up last night's meat or whatever it was. And we would stir fry it all together in the next morning and have an egg on it. And that's, that's a majority of my leftover practice, which is fried rice. I love that though. I don't know how to do it. Well, I know that like, I, I this is something I wanted to ask you is sure. like, I always wanted to know how to do fried rice. And like, I always have leftover rice, but I always feel like I don't, I don't wait long enough or I didn't put enough oil in the pan or I don't have the right pan for it. Like, how do I do that? I would love to know. What is the problem that is happening? Like, is it? I feel like I don't have enough confidence to be like, yeah, let's do fried rice. Like, I don't, when do I put the egg in? What are, what are the components that I need? I guess I want to ask you the question and then I'll go fry it. Yeah, you usually start with the things that need to be sauteed first. Okay. Um, like uh, if it's a chopped up steak that needs to be fried up or if it's like vegetables that are a little too firm, uh, yeah. then you'll start stir frying that first yeah and then um or you know if there's like something like a fatty meat of some sort you want to make sure the fat is like melted off of that and it gets a little crisp first um and then this is where you add like a pat of butter or like the fat of of what you're going to be using like yeah. probably two tablespoons per pint of rice the rice has to be day old it has to be dry because if you use fresh rice, it's just going to stick together. And that's how you make mochi. Nice. <laughs> fresh rice pounded together is mochi. Um, so you need it to be dried out a day in advance. So leftover rice is perfect for fried rice. Um, so you melt down your butter. This is where you would add alliums if you're using them because you don't want to overcook them. So right before you put in the rice, because when you put the rice in, it's kind of like putting a blanket over a fire. <laughs> Um, and then from there, you're breaking it up and stirring it all together because you've cooked off all the, the protein fat. It's going to meld with all the rice. And then this is where you start adding any more flavor elements. So this is where you're going to do salt and pepper and soy sauce if you use it. Um, and from there, it should be fine. Um, and if it's too dry, that means maybe you needed a little bit more butter. Or if it's too, too dry and it hurts your teeth when you <laughs> bite into it, that means the rice was dry it out too much and wow. maybe you can add like a splash of broth or water okay so when do i put the egg in the egg is usually separate so you can do that uh -huh. ahead before you do all the protein and vegetable stuff or take out the protein and vegetable stuff cook the egg and then add your fat 
And yep, then- didn't think, yep, didn't think of that. That yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. You put a fried egg on top afterwards. Yep. There mm-hmm. I feel very silly that I didn't think of that. I thought it was like, yeah, and then you scramble it in. That was, you know. Yeah, because if you scramble a raw egg into the thing, it's just gonna cake together. Um, you'll end up with more of a frittata situation, which is fine and still edible. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's how it's um, uniformly out. You know, it's how it's structurally separate from all the the rice. So I'm, I'm glad I could clear that up for you. <laughs> no, incredible. I just literally, I forgot. I didn't, never even thought of it. <laughs> uh, catching up here in the chat, Amanda shared the link for Shaquanda Will Feed You, which is the hot sauce, the amazing black owned hot sauce business in Brooklyn. Thank you. I will definitely be buying some of that. I, uh, feel, so, I feel so bad that Amanda's doing my fact checking. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's so helpful. You're like a chat mod. It's so good. Oh, my God. Olivia says the Chinese cooking demystified video about fried rice really leveled up your fried rice game. Oh, great. Ooh, Glad that we have some links in here. Um, we got a channel. Uh, we got some some votes of confidence over that channel. Oh, here's the video. Thank you for sharing that. I'll tweet that later too. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, good advice. Everyone's sharing resources in the chat. Thank you all. And looking at the time, uh, I want to use these last ten minutes to. Well, actually, I have I have one more one more soapboxy thing about takeout in general, which is supporting our restaurant workers who are working so hard. They're essential. Um, hopefully, all getting vaccinated. Uh, hopefully soon. But um, lots of ways to support our restaurant workers in Brooklyn and Greenpoint everywhere. Um, lots of mutual aid groups out there that we can be donating to. Make sure you are giving big ass tips. Tips, tips, tips. These people are going out of their way and risking their literal lives to bring y'all food. So make sure if you do treat yourself to some takeout, uh, treat your restaurant workers really well. Another way to support restaurants is to buy gift certificates. Um, If you don't necessarily want anything right now and want to make sure that they're still there, go ahead and look if they have any gift certificates. And then Diego earlier had a great suggestion was literally ask if they have a Venmo and give them money directly Uh, because tips uh, sometimes get pooled uh, and divided between workers. And so if you want to directly give to somebody, you can just straight up ask, (laughs) like, do you have Venmo? Do you have Cash App? (laughs) Can I give you $20? Can I give you some money? Yeah. 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 If there's a restaurant that you really like and you really like the owners of it, you should also buy their merch. I know yeah. a lot of places have been making merch. Like I bought so much from Katz's when they turned it out. Um, and because like I from a pod, like a, a creator perspective, I know how much money is sunk into merch when and then it doesn't get bought. So like buy their merch if they're putting merch out. Yes, yes, absolutely. Merch represent the places that you want to, uh, that you want to stick around, friends. Yes. Uh, but let's let's get to my last exercise here. If for those of you who are new to the chat, we like to pretend that we're on the show chopped for the last uh, 10 minutes of the show. So let's pretend we're on this TV show. If you don't know the show, there is a mystery basket with four ingredients in it and chefs have to use them to make a dish. So in our case, you, the chat, will tell us what's in the basket. The first four ingredients in the chat are gonna be the ones that we use. So please go ahead and start shouting them out. Uh, there are no wrong answers. The purpose of this exercise is just think about how far ingredients are go, uh, maybe inspire our next meals. So I'll go through each of the ingredients individually to make sure you all know what we're working with. Uh, but be- feel free to just, you know, brain barf. Uh, tell us how you'd combine two ingredients, three, or even all four, but no pressure. Imagine that you have a basic pantry and all the tools and time you need. And you know, remember just to feature the things in the basket. Uh, so Alan is standing are, behind you. Are you a fan of Chopped? Do you watch that show? Uh, yeah, Chopped is on in our house a lot. <laughs> yes, to say to say to say it lightly. Yes, Ted Allen is standing behind me. Mark Murphy <laughs> is standing there looking cool. I'm making big mug, uh, mean mugging all the judges I don't like. Uh, I, I'm hanging out with Alex Cornishelli. We're taking a show. Oh my god, I love yes, it. Yes, I'm. I'm to say lightly, we're fans of Chop. Yeah. Oh, we have an interruption. Gwem redeemed taste test. Oh my. 
So taste test, if you don't know, we've got uh, some channel points here in the chat. The longer you're in the chat, the more points you get. And I was ready for you, Gwem, this time, so I don't have to get up. But uh, taste test is I grab something random from the fridge and I will eat a spoonful and tell you what it is. So interrupting our, our little exercise. This is a blackberry coulis. Do you know what a coulis is? How do you just have black? This is some like only things they say on Top Chef is like, oh, I have a coulis here. I just have yes. it. I'm, I'm working on a cookbook and I, we're in the cake chapter. And so uh, Cooley is a cooked down pureed and strained fruit sauce. Oh my God. That so looks black. It's actually much simpler than you think. Going to eat uh, a lovely spoonful. Oh my gosh. These are, these go on top of pavlovas. That's what I'm working on right now. Um, but blackberries are cooked down with a little bit of sugar, half cup of water, five minutes, that's it. They just bring to a boil just to mix the sugar into the water solution. You put it in the blender um, and then you strain that and then add any flavor element like either lemon or vanilla or bitters or anything liquid extracty. Uh, that's how you flavor your coulis, but that's it. That's a sauce. It could be a pancake syrup. It can go on Sundays, it can go drizzled on anything and i just ate a spoonful of it so thank you for redeeming your taste test gwem haha -ha. <laughs> i pre-order your cookbook now or do I <laughs> just let me know i've got one out uh, i'm working on other people's cookbooks right now but i will happily share those links later <laughs> show the links um how are you doing on time do you need to go go at like 6 30 soon ish i definitely want to do chopped Okay, so the first four ingredients we got here are apple from Leah, pickle juice from Olivia, tapenade from Gwem, and hala, very on point for this chat from Schmas. Sorry, Amanda, we'll do tofu next time. <laughs> but friends, how would you combine apple, pickle juice, tapenade, and hala in a dish? No pressure. You can do two ingredients or three. You don't have to do all four. But if you do all four, you are god tier in this chat. Oh, I can. Oh, I know. Exa those are all ingredients I want to make right now. I okay. would. I would make a. Uh, I'd make a tuna melt. A hundred percent. Whoa, tuna melt. Okay, talk me through how you would do that. So if I if I I don't know if they would have canned tuna, but they would probably have tuna the protein. So I would like quickly cook it up and and then add because the tapenade and the pickle juice are the spicy are the salty things. So just, that's perfect in oh, yeah. melt. That's perfect in tuna. Apple also I love like the really crunchy, really crunchy uh, tuna. So you add that in there, put mm. whatever, maybe just straight up American or cheddar on it, and then grill the challah is perfect for a tuna melt to hold it all together. Boom, that's a tuna melt. Wow, you're yeah. so good at this. Those are those were for the perfect ingredients. Whoa. I would not be able to do it. But like <laughs> those so are fast. those are all things I wanted to put in a, in tuna. And then I'm like, oh, but the challah, and then to, to, to make it for chopped for Mark Murphy to pull it all together and make it a tuna. <laughs> you obviously watch this show. <laughs> That was amazing. I mean, a, a way that we could still, you know, uh, do this, we could make like a cute little like snacky board, like a plowman's lunch that, you know, literally just sliced apples. Maybe we could, we could sprinkle some of the pickle juice on the apples so they don't turn brown. Yes. A little bit. Uh, just have a scoop of chavanade and like toasted hala points. Like that's just a really good snack. Like so good. I think you could also have a really interesting just regular salad or mm. because those are all things using the pickle juice in a dressing, the tapenade, obviously olives would go perfect in a salad. Apple also perfect in a salad. And then the challah making that into croutons would also work uh, super yeah, well. Yeah. What if we did a French toast with the apple, like challah French toast with the yeah. apple? That yeah. sounds really good. Or what if we did a savory French toast with the hala and the pickle juice and then pickled the apple. Yeah, like, yes, yes, yes. In, in matchsticks, that would be lovely. And then you can put some locks on it and- <laughs> Yeah, I gotta add those locks. <laughs> you could do something like, you could also do a Reuben, I think, or something, or, or something like a Monte Cristo. 
Yes. You're going to eat because challah, perfect for French toast. The apple, it would be crunchy. Use the pickle juice for whatever kind of dressing or, or and the pickle juice and the tapenade would go perfectly in whatever type of uh, sauce you wanted to put on it. Yeah. Oh, Olivia, I know. Olivia says, God, I'm so hungry. That's the danger of watching this stream is because yeah. you're going to get hungry. It's, it's, it's very dangerous. You got to have a snack. Amanda says, I would do a brisket or pulled pork slider on the challah. Yes, zhuzh up the tabernacle with the apple, pickle yeah. juice, and radish on top. That sounds so lovely and, and crunchy, like really playing to the texture there. I, I really like that. Um, and that brings up another way that you can address this exercise is taking something that you already know how to make really well, like yeah. if it was a ham sandwich or a tuna melt or like nachos, and then just switching out uh, one or two of the ingredients. And then maybe you can think through like, is that possible? Would that taste good? Yeah. Um, and one of my secrets is that I, I love reading the Flavor Bible. It's a reference book, but I'm a nerd. So <laughs> I like reading it for fun. <laughs> Um, but last call for ideas, friends, you can just spin them out. And you know what, if you don't have ideas right now and you feel put on the spot, you can still tweet me, uh, your ideas. If in the middle of the night, you're like, Jen, wait, <laughs> you can totally tweet me. My Twitter is randwitches. Okay, um, I got one more. I have okay. one more, uh, hot, like really classy Mac and cheese. If it was like if you were gonna do um like a alpine version because the cheddar and the apple would go really well together using yeah. the challah as the breadcrumbs on top or croutons and then of course the pickle juice and the tapenade for whatever kind of salty you could use it in the bechamel of the cheese yes exactly yeah. and the, pic the pickle juice and the tapenade fit so well together i'm like oh yeah then put them where the i use pickle juice and olives in so much stuff so i'm like yeah. and then they fit they just go they go in the thing so yeah, yeah. Hannibal Buress has this really funny bit where he doesn't throw away the pickle juice yeah. and uses it. He puts his hand in the jar and flicks it on sandwiches. That <laughs> is an incredibly good idea. I know. Instead of uh, oil and vinegar, it's just pickle juice. You could also do, okay, here we go. What you could do like a really classy charcuterie board. Like think about if you're in, you're at like Torst or you're at like a mm. really fancy um beer bar and this is like the charcuterie board they give you really really nice challah and you you mix it up and you toast you toast it up the apple would pair with whatever cheese you have the tapenade would be some sort of dip and the pickle juice you get like a classy pickleback so oh, pickleback such a good idea oh drinks is a whole nother avenue we need to talk about on another stream pickleback man picklebacks are the future oh man uh catching up here in the chat uh uh, let's see, uh, maybe like a panzanella from Schmoss here. Big challah hunks, uh, tiny, tangy pickle, tapenade dressing, apple slices. Oh, yum. Same uh, Amanda. Uh, Amanda. <laughs> uh, la, 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 la. Oh, Olivia used uh, some random pickle juice for a chicken marinade. That's also a great idea. Pickle the apples. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, endorsement for picklebacks. Yeah. Well, friends, uh, if you have any more ideas, please do tweet them to me. I know we're cutting it a little short today, but Eric, thank you for being here and Absolutely. talking to me for so long about food. How can people find you online? I Sorry, I got really stuck in um, trying to do a hard mode, which is if this was a dessert round. <laughs> there was, I'm wondering if it was because they didn't give a protein. So if this was the dessert round, you make a bread pudding. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and then of course, and then you can like mask the pickle juice and the and the tapenade in some sweet, sweet, make it sweet and salty. Um, but that's right, we're done doing chopped and I need to move on. <laughs> oh man, you can find me on Twitter at L underscore Silvero, E L underscore S I L V E R O. My name, if I was a Lucha Libre wrestler with a little underscore in the middle, you can find the podcast that I make. There's Join the Party, which is the Dungeon Dragon show that I'm the DM for. Uh, and also all the other things that you have in Multitude. Just put Multitude into your podcast player and you'll find all of our shows. And you can find the streams that I do with Amanda. If you like Amanda putting links in the chat, that's what it's like when we talk. We play video games together. We are doing, we are just finishing up a Pokemon Ruby Nuzlocke run. But since, no, cool. 
But since Amanda does not like it when uh, Pokemon, quote unquote, die as they do in a Nuzlocke run, we are donating $5 to North Brooklyn Angels every time that a Pokemon passes away. We've donated <laughs> like, we're nearing uh, $200. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's all going to North Brooklyn Angels. That is the food that uh, gives out meals in North Brooklyn. Um, incredible. If we are house breakfast so we're twitch.tv slash house breakfast or find us on twitter at house breakfast underscore okay everybody please follow um next week we've got dr shannon odell who is my castmate on fun city and we will be talking about neuroscience and the brain so uh stay tuned next wednesday 5 p.m eastern here on attack the pantry thanks for hanging out with us everybody bye Bye. Bye. I should stop. <laughs>